Hello everybody and welcome to the Grumpy Old Airsofter video of the LCT RPK-16 or LCK-16. Um, it's a new gun, it's a, in fact the real one's only been in service with the Russians for just over a year uh, and it was a bit of a bitch to get hold of um, due to coronavirus. So we had um, Red Wolf, I initially ordered one from, I had the one in stock. Um, couldn't get it in the end because of EMS shipping to the UK was suspended. Uh, so I cancelled that order. Tried to order one with Gunfire, uh, who'd sold out on their pre-orders. Uh, and in the end, uh, I managed to find the last one in Europe, I think, uh, with these guys, uh, Haristo Airsoft, um, in Croatia. Um, five days to get to the UK from Croatia. <clears throat> Can't fault the service uh, from Haristo. They also use GLS shipping. Um, I flatly refuse to use anyone who will use UPS uh, because UPS are a bunch of fucking cowboys uh, who've lost multiple parcels and, and try to use coronavirus as an excuse for shoddy service. Anyway, it arrived safely. Uh, it's in a massive box. Uh, I'm not doing unboxing videos because I'm not an attention-seeking whore like some YouTubers. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to see a box. I'm sure you want to know about the gun. So here we go. It is made of steel and polymer. There's only one piece of it made of aluminium. Uh, that would be the stock tube, just like M4s and all those other kinds of guns. So nothing unusual there. Cuts down on weight. Probably saves money on production costs as well. <clears throat> I've stuck some magnets to it already, <clears throat> so you can see where the, uh, the steel parts are. We'll start at the front. We've got the flash hider, solid steel, outer barrel, gas plug, gas plug housing, gas tube, moving down the gun. You've got the top cover release catch, the main receiver, the fire selector, trigger guard, rear sight assembly, and the stock release catch. I think that's about all of it. This is like I said, it's stock tubes aluminium. <clears throat> the stock is polymer with a rubber butt pad. Uh, I bodged on a uh, paracord uh, sling hook because I'm a cheapskate and I don't like those uh, clip on ones because they rattle too much. I've also added uh, a gripod, grip pod, whatever you call the bloody things. Um, so it acts as a foregrip and as a bipod. Because as you can see, it's quite a compact looking gun. It's actually smaller than the AK-12, which is an assault rifle. Whereas this is a assault machine gun. So it serves two purposes. I can use it as a support weapon, but it will also take normal AK magazines. So I can use it as uh, an assault rifle if needs be. Also means I can share magazines with teammates, which is great. Moving on a bit, there's nothing else to say about it really. I mean, you can see that it's a solid looking bit of, bit of kit. The handguard, well, it's made out of polymer. You can see, I creak it around. There is absolutely no movement or creaking in that thing whatsoever. It's a bit of a bitch to get off because you basically got to take the front end of the gun off to get at it as well. But why would you want to take it off anyway? I can't know of any aftermarket handguards at the moment for it. At the front, you've got this uh, huge 14mm uh, CCW flash hider. Uh, which I've taken the liberty of undoing the handguard, the, sorry, the grub screw which holds it on, uh, because underneath it all is rather a long CCW thread. We'll get there at the end, don't worry. Make yourself a cup of tea while you're waiting. Smoke if you go. Right, there we go. So, full steel flash hider. Nothing else there. I mean, if you were an MMO, you just take that off and throw that at the enemy because it weighs quite a bit. At the front, uh, LCT have added some kind of spacer. <clears throat> it acts as a barrel stabiliser. Uh, it's not particularly tight or anything like that. It's made of, it's made of steel. Got a little cut out of it. And it just slides between the outer barrel and the inner barrel. 
Also handy if you've got silencers with uh, the extended inner barrels because it will help you to line them up. Uh, keeps it nice and tight if that sort of thing floats your boat. Put that down as well. And at the front, by the way, excuse the floor, I haven't finished the floor in this room yet. This has been my new man cave. At the front, you can see the uh, outer barrel, inner barrel rather, is crowned. And it comes right to the end of the outer barrel. Now, that's great. Just remember, if you're going to fit a silencer up, trace a unit to this thing. Uh, if it goes too far down the thread and the uh, inner barrel ends there and your tracer starts here, uh, it might not activate the uh, tracer unit when you fire the gun. Something to bear in mind. No great big deal, really. <coughs> LCT actually now do a range of AK flash hiders with tracer units built in. That's uh, so the next thing that's going to be going on one when I can actually find one in stock anywhere. It's got a tactical fire selector on it, as you can see, whatever they call it. With this little catch on that you're supposed to be able to use your thumb to activate. Great if you're right handed. Uh, I'm a caggy lefty, so it doesn't really work for me. But obviously, it's really stiff, like all LCT guns when they come out of the factory. Which is grace. I'm not going to start talking about the internals because I'm not going to take it apart because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What I will say is when I got this gun uh, from Haristo, it was doing 420 FPS, which is way over the limits for UK. So I'd preempted that by buying an M100 spring. I put that in uh, and the gun was doing 380 FPS which was a, <laughs> a bit of a surprise. Uh, couldn't get that down. Um, so I had to fit an M90 in the end. Uh, and that is giving me 344 FPS. So it shows you that the, the air seal in this thing uh, must be absolutely phenomenal. Like I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You also get with it uh, this thing. Dirty great big, 2,000 rounds, electrically winding drum magazine. Uh, when it's on the gun, all you do is push up on this lever and that will activate the feed inside the drum mag. Uh, it works off three AAA batteries. It's not particularly heavy when it's empty. When it's full, it is heavy. Something to be worth uh, bearing in mind. I personally hate slings. Uh, the sling is the tool of a lazy soldier, as I was once told. However, on a gun like this, uh, I think a sling is pretty much a prerequisite, especially when it's got a full drum mag on it. Nothing else to say about it. But to get into it, all you have to do, if I can do this one-handed, yes I can, is unscrew this, this nut, and the back should just pop off. Come on, you bloody thing. Is it? One sec. I'll just hold the camera. All right. Take that off. There you go. So, there you can see. If that kind of thing floats your bows, there's the uh, inside of the magazine. Nice little touch. Uh, I have got batteries in this already. If the battery housing has got an on off switch, so you can't. <clears throat> get to the site that you're playing at, find out that your magazine's been activated in your bag and all your batteries are flat. So you switch it on. And all the things being well, if I push this lever up. There you go. You can see that it works off that. Switch it off. And there you go. <clears throat> But, what if you don't want to use it with the drum mag? Well, the beauty of a gun like this is, it takes other mags. Now, I haven't got um, AK-74 magazines to try this with. Uh, but I have got a selection of AK magazines that we can try this with. So just bear with me, because I'm no expert with camera work. 
and we'll go through them one at a time. First of all, we'll try it with the TWI Mart magazine. There you go, clicks in nicely. There's no backward movement on it, which means that that will feed well. I haven't had a chance to fire this in the field yet. These things are gloriously oversized and completely impractical. They only hold about 150 rounds, but God, they look cool. Next one is a D-Day or Arcturus AK-12 magazine. Now I have already tried this in the gun. This is the gun, the magazine that I used to chrono it with. Uh, and although it fits really tightly with no wobble, um, I did find that I had to pull back on the magazine uh, to make it feed. So all I did, if you can see that on the camera, is add a little shim on the back of the magazine catch part. Just a bit of super glue, a little bit of plastic card, doesn't have to be anything fantastic. And now, that locks in solidly. So, if you look at that, and you look at an AK-12 or AK-15, is that going to balance? It is. An AK-12 or an AK-15, there's not much difference, is there? The use of these D-Day magazines is, they're less than half the price of the official LCT one. They look better because they're a nice flat matte colour. And um, you can reduce the capacity from 130 rounds down to 30 if you play games with real steel ammo limits. I don't know many of them that do, uh, but useful if you were to try that. Very nice magazines. I think I paid a tenner each for them from Patrol Base in the UK. After uh, those idiots at Taiwan Gun used uh, UPS to ship my an order, <coughs> which promptly got stolen by someone at UPS. Uh, and then they're going to get their money back. Next magazine. Now, I know these are AK-47 magazines. But if you're an Anorak, then switch off and go away. I'm not really interested. So, 47 magazines. This is just to show. Can I do this one-handed? There you go. In it clicks. Bit of wobble. I'm not sure if that will actually feed or not, but you can see that it engages on the magazine. So that's a Simer AK-47 magazine. Now, Simer magazines fit in everything anyway. I've never had any problems with Simer magazines. So confident that 74 magazines would fit as well. Next one we have is a, this is an LCT, AK-47 magazine, steel as well. See what that one does. You'd expect this to fit, wouldn't you? There you go, fits. No real wobble. Solid. This is actually one of the harder to get 130 round LCT magazines as well. And finally, the only other magazines I've got, because um, I've got an AKM, um, is an um, E&L AK-47 magazine. Now I had to shim this one as well to get this one to feed in uh, my LCT AKM. So let's see what happens in my LCT RPK. Oh, nice click there. No movement at all. Nice shimming if I say so myself. Okay. And also you'll see, if you can see on that, LCT fitted a magwell spacer as standard on this gun. See it in there? Now that was a real pain in the arse previously because they were 20 quid each if not more and you can never find them in stock anywhere. It does make your magazine changing a lot easier. Right it's preliminary impressions of this gun really. I haven't had a chance to skirmish it yet. Um, I'm planning on going to a Milson game in a couple of weeks' time where it's probably going to get a very good run for its money. Uh, but initial impressions are this is absolutely solid. 
um, it shoots well, it's got a very good air seal, it's compatible with a lot of different magazines, it's incredibly compact. And if you've handled an old style RPK, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's less than half the price of a PKM, of an LCT PKM or an RPD. Um, and it can be used in the assault rifle role as well. So it's the best of both worlds really. Um, it wasn't cheap, but quality never is. Um, I would say if you can find one, and if this is the kind of gun that floats your boat, um, you should really get one. Uh, when it's accessorized or anything like that, uh, and all the other bits and bobs are done, uh, um, I may post up some comments on how I got on with it, um, how it shoots, um, how, you know, any issues that I have with it or anything like that. Um, but so far, everything's good. Uh, and I hope that you uh, you found this video useful. Uh, it's the first video on this channel. Um, I'll be back with many more, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Take care, guys. Catch you later.